Since 2017, Bandai has been consistently releasing new Digimon Virtual Pets, and here at the end of 2021, there are a lot of options when it comes to modern V-Pets. Now, if you aren't obsessed like I am, it can be difficult to know just what devices are out there, so I wanted to summarize the current state of modern Digimon V-Pets. Before I get into that though, this video is sponsored by Zenin TCG. From now until the end of the year, Zenin TCG will be running a sale on a variety of Digimon products, including the DIM file, Volume 3 DIM set, DIM holster, and the Vital Bracelet itself. The Digivice V is also back in stock, and if you're looking for rarer items, both the Vital Bracelet version special and the 0.5 DIM set will be on sale as well. Quantities are limited, so you'll want to move fast. Hit up the link in the description to shop now. To start, we'll talk about the device that kicked off the Digimon V Pet resurgence, the Digital Monster version 20. This device was originally released back in 2017, and it is now available in English as well, and there are a variety of colors to choose from. 15 for the English release, and then there's also three Japanese exclusive colors on top of that. So this device remains a great entry point to the series. It's very easy to get your hands on, and it remains cheap. In the US, you can get it for 20 USD, and it goes on sale a lot for less than that. So pretty easy to get your hands on, and there's a lot of great features to it. It's got a huge roster. If you really like raising a wide variety of Digimon, it's a great device to go with. I will say, out of all the pets I'm going to talk about here, this is one of the weaker ones. Uh, it's not my favorite of the modern virtual pets, and that's not because it's a bad device, it's just because the other ones are all so much better. But I think there is still some charm in this, especially because it does show off the original variety that Digimon had in its first few versions way back when in the late 90s. So definitely still worth picking up. You got to have at least one of these. I know for a while there, that's all a lot of people had was just the, uh, they were just able to get their hands on the DM20. So it's uh, still great to pick up. If you don't have one yet, I'm just very surprised, but go fix that right now. Just go get one and give it a shot for yourself. It comes in five different versions total. So there's the A, B, C, D, and E versions, all of which contain slightly different rosters, but that doesn't matter too much. And when I say slightly, I mean really slight. So more than anything, just pick the color you like best. Personally, I'm a big fan of this glow in the dark one, but there's a lot of other great colors available for it. So definitely a good one to pick up. And I should say that this series is likely done forever. They're really milking it for a while, doing the English release over three waves. They also did the version revival in Japan, which I don't recommend getting because it is technically better, but it's also technically a lot more expensive. So either way, I don't expect to see any more DM20 stuff come out in the future. So go ahead and grab whatever color you like and uh, we'll move on to the next pet. So if you were to talk to me a few years ago and ask me which Digimon V pet should you get, I would recommend this one immediately, the Digimon Pendulum version 20. I was super excited when this first got announced and it remains a fantastic device. It, just like the Digital Monster version 20th, you can raise two Digimon at a time. It contains all the Digimon from the original Digimon um, Pendulum series and it's just it's just a blast. There's a lot of stuff on here, a lot of content. And if you're like me, you can also mod it to make it even better of a device. Now, here's the thing though. Like I said, I would have said to get this a few years ago, but at this point, this device has just become overinflated in price and it's really sad to see. It is way too expensive to pick one of these up these days and honestly, I can't properly recommend it. For the most part, if you really want to try out the Digimon Pendulum experience, I'd recommend going the classic route and getting one of the original Digimon Pendulums, which you'll be able to pick up for much cheaper. So this is a, it's still a great device, don't get me wrong, I just really hope at some point they do another release of it, either a version revival in Japan or maybe even bring it over to, um, to the United States and other countries, make an English version of it. That would be fantastic, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. It's definitely not happening the next year, but hopefully we do see it again at some point because this is just a great device. It also introduced the freeze function, which the Digital Monster 20th didn't have. It poops a lot less than the Digital Monster version 20th and uh, Digimon start aging while they sleep, which again, wasn't in the version 20th. So all those things work together with just the charm of the original Pendulums too. Just listen, listen to that clacker. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of good stuff involved with this device. So if you are able to get your hands on it, you know, great, but I don't think it's worth what people are charging for it. So sorry if you didn't get your hands on this when it was cheap, but these days it is more difficult to get a hold of. So look at the other pets before you go with this one, unless you're a serious collector and you really want to have at least one Digimon version, uh, Digimon Pendulum version 20th. Up next, we have the Digital Monster X, and this series actually is my favorite virtual pet of all time. 
uh, specifically this one right down here, which we'll talk about that more in a second. I really do love this device. I think it actually is the best modern virtual pet. Not so much version one, just because it has a much more limited roster and I also don't care for the rosters that they included in there. It's weird, like it's supposed to be about the X antibody, but there's a lot of non-X antibody Digimon in them, whereas on the second and third releases, the non-X antibody Digimon are at least like kind of guest stars more than anything. But either way, so these became available in English for the first time this past year. And that we have examples of that right here. This is the version XA and version XB, both from the original Digital Monster X version 1 release. So these are available currently online in the United States, and they're starting to show up in retail stores in Canada. We have a few members of the Discord server who've reported finding them out there. Haven't seen it show up in retail in the United States yet, and haven't really seen it sold outside of North America on a wide scale yet. So that maybe that's changed. Maybe someone is able to find it out there. But for now, it looks like mostly importing if you're not in North America. But either way, hopefully it'll expand to more places like the Digital Monster version 20th did. Hopefully it'll be easier to get your hands on elsewhere. But for right now, it remains a fantastic virtual pet that you should definitely try to get your hands on. So the X2, which we have an example of right here that consists of the versions XC and XD, that will be coming out in early 2022. Amazon currently has them listed for March as the release date on that. Now, whether or not that's a placeholder, not 100% sure. It's also in the department of shoes. Um, one of them's in the bowling shoes section and the other one's in the women's shoes section. So yeah, I don't think it's finalized yet, but Bandai's official Twitter has at least recognized them, um, albeit with the incorrect sprites, but they have recognized them at least. So those will be releasing very soon. Uh, currently only United, um, folks in the United States can pre-order them, but don't worry, they'll be widely available. Nice thing about both the Digital Monster X series so far and the Digital Monster version 20th um, English releases has been that they are widely available. They haven't gone out of stock. You haven't had to worry about getting your order in if you want to secure one. Like They have been consistently stocked, so you never have to worry about missing out on this. So if you're not sure, if you want to hold off and not pre-order, just wait. They'll be available, so don't worry too much about that. As for the X3, uh, that will probably be releasing as well in English. We don't have any firm confirmation on that, so I can't say that for 100% certain, but it is almost definitely going to happen. Um, the X series appeared to have been very successful, um, and the X2 series will likely also be currently the number one selling item in bowling shoes, I will have you know, um, <laughs> if that's surprising to anyone. So I do expect them to release the X3 at some point. That could be towards the end of 2022. They have gone usually about eight months between releases for the Digital Monster version 20th. That's what it kind of averaged out to. And this would be uh, pretty close to that between the X1 and X2. So we could see that about same time frame. So that could either mean end of 2022 or early 2023 for the X3. Again, no official confirmation, but that's what it's looking like. Now you may be wondering, why do I like this pet more than the other ones? Especially since the Pendulum 20th and the DM20 have such bigger rosters. Uh, they have so many Digimon you can raise. And while it's true, you can't raise as many Digimon on this. There's only 30 raisable Digimon on each of these. 45 on this one, I think 50 on this one. Um, there's not a huge number on these devices to raise, but even then, the gameplay is much improved. There's a lot more involved with actually raising your Digimon, especially because it's got this whole RPG quest system going on. It's not like super fleshed out, you know, it's still basic Digimon fighting, but at the very least, you can level up. Your Digimon has stats that will increase uh, as it levels up, and it's just, I don't know, it's just a lot more fun because. Like before, you would get your 15 battles and be done with it, and now you're leveling up to be able to reach certain evolutionary stages. Evolution paths branch like crazy. Like every Digimon has at least three different things that can evolve into. In some cases, even the uh, ultimate stages have more than one super ultimate that they can evolve into, which is not something you see on any other device that I'm talking about today. So it's a uh, for people who like branching evolutions, this is just a ton of fun for that. There's so many directions you can go, so many requirements you can fulfill to get different branches so I th for me that makes it, it make up for the fact that it is a small roster because yeah it is a smaller roster but you know you, you're not locked into a specific path once you reach perfect and other devices it's like uh, or what well even adult actually because on the digital monster version 20th it's like okay you got Greymon that means you're going to get metal Greymon and you're going to get blitz Greymon and there's nothing else you can get in between there that's it those are your only choices here once you get to random on x it can go in a variety of different ways and that makes it so much more of a fun experience for me to have that variety in the actual evolution paths rather than just the variety in the Digimon you can raise. So 
you know, that might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I do feel like this device also just includes you more in the raising process. So that's why I like it a lot. I really love it. X2, the version, uh, the XC roster specifically is my absolute favorite roster on any of these devices. Well, that's not true, but it's not necessarily, it's my favorite roster on the X devices. I do have other favorite rosters on other devices, specifically um, the Deep Savers devices, but as far as we're talking about the X series, it's this one for sure. That's the roster I like the most. And that's just because it's got, you know, some good bugs and dinos and such in there. It's got a little Gomamon X who's super cute. So lots of good stuff on there. There's lots of good stuff on all of the version two and version three devices on this, but you'll be able to see that for yourself as they come out in the near future, at least again. This one for sure, this one for maybe, don't know yet, but definitely get your hands on them. Even if it's just one of these, ooh, that was a bump of the camera. Sorry about that, everybody. Even if it's just one of these original versions um, right here, the X1s, um, still still uh, worth it, I'd say, just to at least try it out. But if the smaller roster does concern you, then, you know, wait for the second one. Get the second one. The second one I have nothing but good things to say about. So there you go. And now we come to the series in which I was sadly most disappointed out of the modern VPET releases. And that surprises me to say because these aren't bad virtual pets, but they have a lot of wasted potential. And I'll explain that a little bit here. But first thing to know is that the first three devices of this came out in 2020 of the Pendulum Z. And the second wave came out in March of this past year. So these are still fairly recent. These are the, um, the most recent classic Digimon virtual pet devices as they've been released in Japan and you know hopefully we see more like this but to explain why these ones don't really do it as much for me it's that they started off looking like something super cool right so Pendulum Z they're like let's go back to the folder continent let's add new Digimon and we have great new Digimon in the series we have stuff like Gogmamon, Marine Chimeramon, Ghostmon, Teropiamon, Rebellamon, and uh, Manticoremon all of which are just fantastic Digimon they look amazing they really fit the aesthetic really well, and they're also like not there to be in a straight line, which I love. All these Digimon have multiple things that's like, yeah, I can see this evolving into this and this and this, or coming from this, this and this. They've, they've filled up a lot of like really good gaps in a lot of these rosters for where you're just missing certain aesthetics of Digimon. So I really like that about this series, but the execution was just not quite there. So for all the focus on new Digimon that there was, this also turned out to have a lot more focus on anime-specific Digimon, and that's can be seen by looking at Nature Spirits, where you have the Gaumon line, you have the Falcomon line on the Wind Guardians, you have um, the Algomon line on the Nightmare Soldiers, and then you have this one, which is just anime, but to be fair, the original Virus Busters was also just anime, but whatever. Either way, the point is, is that between all these devices, there's a lot of anime characters, and the biggest offender of that is the fact that on each of these devices, the special unlocks are either Agumon and Agumon, or Gabumon and Wolfmon, and then all their evolution lines. And then once you unlock them, they become some of the top character Digimon on the device. So if you raise your Digimon perfectly on the Deep Savers device, you get Agumon instead of some kind of aquatic Digimon. And that really bugs me. Like, I wish they were some, there was some other kind of condition to unlock them, or even if they were a separate egg entirely that I could choose to run if I wanted to, but I don't know. I feel like there is a missed opportunity there. They also could have mixed it up a little bit. Like on each device, we have a different zero two partner. And I feel like they could have done that further by having, instead of just Agumon, why not have Agumon on one of these devices, but then also use Tentomon and Palmon and the others and just spread it out. And then same thing with the spirits, spread out the six main characters in the show. And that would have even been better, but instead it's a lot of these rosters share the same Digimon. And it's just really frustrating when the main rosters are also pretty small. They're the same, they're just about the same size as the original Pendulums, but with three additional ultimates, and then the rest of the roster is filled up with all those extra Digimon of either Agumon and Gabumon, etc. So, and then the last thing that's really annoying is that the final evolution of reaching Super Ultimate is just awful. <laughs> it's, you get one of three choices on each wave. So on this wave, you get Apoclamon or um, Armageddon or Fanglamon. Then on this wave, you get either um, actually Fonglongmon and Armageddon again, or uh, Lusemon, and that's kind of it. Th those are your super ultimates for the main ca the main Digimon you raise. And then you also, of course, have Omegamon again. You have Suzanomon, and you have um, Imperial Dramon Fighter Mode. And I mean, sorry, Imperial Dramon Paladin Mode once again. Like it's just a 
I don't know. I, I just wish this was more about the pendulum cells and less about the anime. And... Because, I mean, I don't know. It's it, Pendulums originally kind of created what Digimon would become. And I know maybe not everyone has that hang up on it. And nor should they. The anime is a great thing for Digimon. Obviously, it's what popularized it. That's why most people know what Digimon is. And so maybe that's a draw for you. And if that's a draw for you, hey, that's great. It's just not my draw. And I'd probably be more okay with it if it weren't for the fact that the gameplay was just the same thing as Digital Monster X, which would be good if the Joggers implementation wasn't really lazy. Um, it's kind of just pathetic because you can just Joggers up to Ultimate in a matter of seconds without any effort in it whatsoever. And uh, the original Pendulum, you at least had to have full DP, so you had to do something to be able to do it quickly, but... Yeah, I don't know. I, I know I'm saying a lot of negative about it. It's still a great device, and there's still stable prices for these uh, to import them. So I'd recommend, you know, trying if you do want one of these, get one as soon as possible before prices do inevitably go up for these. And whether or not these will release outside of Japan, I don't see it happening anytime in the near future. Uh, it would be cool if they did, but I don't think there's a lot of uh, push for the Pendulum style in the United States by Bondi of America, at least. If they did bring one over, I'd want them to bring over the Pendulum 20th first. But, again, at the very least, though, great aesthetic, great Digimon on it, the new ones, at least. They're they're fantastic. There's a lot of good about these devices. I still enjoy running them. I just, uh, yeah, they just didn't quite live up to the expectations that I had, which is sad, but oh well. And that brings us to the current hotness, which is the Vital Bracelet series. So, this was a much-anticipated device when it was first revealed. We were all looking forward to finally having a Digimon device that had a color screen, well, a V pet that had a color screen. Crossloader did have a color screen, of course, but this was going to be the first virtual pet that had a color screen. This is going to be the first one to have a backlight. There's, there's got so many features in here, and the whole fitness aspect of it sounded really cool, but I do think they dropped the execution on this one a little bit. Um, the devices have some flaws that are well known, you know, they're not waterproof. They're uh, pretty flimsy. Overall, the bands are not great. They're very small as well. Um, so, but the thing is, is that they are doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is really getting people who don't necessarily look at the virtual pets looking at the virtual pets, which is fantastic. You know, I think um, it has brought in a lot of new people into the community, which I am super happy about. And these people are checking out the other virtual pets, giving them a shot. And, you know, I have nothing bad to say about that. And honestly, there's a lot of fun to be had with them, too. Um, I think especially with the follow-up release they did of the Digivice V. Now, this is pretty surprising to have seen a refresh that quickly in a life cycle, but they really decided, okay, there's a lot of problems with this. Let's fix at least a few of them in this. And they did. The terrible heart rate sensor that caused problems in this, well, it's still here, but they changed the way the software uses it so that it wouldn't be as much of a problem when you're actually running the device. So it's actually fun. I don't have fun with this. I do have fun with this. So, either way... It's a great device to pick up. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than other virtual pets, of course. But the nice thing is, is that there's a huge variety in the roster. And to expand your roster, you don't have to pay for a whole new virtual pet. You have to pay for a dim card like one of these right here. So I've got a whole bunch of them inside this little thingy right here. And the nice thing is, is that these have been coming out pretty often. They've got a good variety of dim cards going on. These are the ones that I keep in my holster because these are the ones that I like the most. I like these a lot. You'll notice most of them are from the volume series, whereas this one's from the anime, um, from Ghost Game, which I don't like most of the anime dims they've done, but this one I like a lot. It's got a lot of aquatic Digimon on it, and I love aquatic Digimon. So there's a good variety of dims going out there, so no matter what kind of Digimon fan you are, there is at least one dim card that you will like, that you'll want to pick up, which is nice. I like that there's such a big variety in the amount of Digimon that they've put in here. They've put in a ton, too. There are hundreds of Digimon on this series that you can get. So it's uh, not as much of a good fitness device as I expected, but it's still fun. The only thing is is that um, it's, while I do call it a virtual pet, I do consider it a virtual pet. There are a lot of people who don't, and with good reason. Uh, there is very minimal interaction with actually taking care of your Digimon. You do have to move around and stuff, you know, in order for it to stay alive. Otherwise it will die from not having you uh, there to detect the pulse, and if you mistreat it by making it battle too much as well, it can also die from that. But beyond that, there's not much you actually have to do to take care of it, and obviously if you're looking for that kind of experience, well, you're not going to get as much of what you'll want here, unfortunately. So that could be something to consider, is that if you are looking for a pet to raise and not just kind of a companion for walking, then this may not be the one for you. But if you do just want a companion, if you're a big fan of the old Digivices, for example, like the ones from the TV shows, 
then this could be the perfect device for you. Now, as far as Dimco, they have kind of slowed down a little bit on releasing, but we do at least have four that are confirmed for next year. We have the three Digimon Tamers Dims releasing in February, and then we have Primeval Warriors featuring Wormmon and a bunch of its evolutions coming out in March. And there's still two dims that we don't know much about, Judgment of Heaven and Karma of the Gods. These dims were first revealed in an issue of V-Jump not too long ago, and we were told they were going to be something to do with the um, Premium Bandai. They were called Premium Dims, but we haven't heard anything about them since then, and we don't know kind of where we're at with that. So hopefully they're still coming out. Hopefully they'll be kind of revealed in the next few weeks or I guess months. I don't know. Hard to say when it'll actually happen, but... Hopefully it does happen, and I also wonder um, what other dims we'll be getting if we are getting more. You know, we are coming close to a year of having the Vital Bracelet, and that's going to be a big question is, does Bondi want to continue the series for another year? So we will definitely have to see, and that's kind of what I want to talk about now, is what the uh, future of Digimon V Pets will be um, from 2022 and onward. So first of all, Sticking with this topic, so DIM. So we've had 23 DIMs that were released just this year alone, and we only know about four for next year, and maybe two if we include the other two I mentioned. So are they going to keep pumping out more DIMs? You know, for example, we don't have any new ones from the Volume series. So we had Volume 1, 2, and 3. We also had Volume 0.5, which was kind of a little bonus release there, but Volume 1, 2, and 3 were kind of like the flagship ones, I would say. Those were the DIMs that really seemed like they were made specifically with the purpose of being put out on the Vital Bracelet, as opposed to other DIM cards, which are usually there to kind of represent another part of the series, such as the EX ones, which represent the anime, or the Ghost Game ones, which represent the anime, or the other ones, which represent the anime. <laughs> There's a lot of anime-related ones. There's also a Metabots one. That's awesome. But I really like the Volume ones because they have more kind of crazy rosters, I guess I should say. Ones that go kind of go all over the place, usually following a theme, of course, but with the uh, Digimon that are more uh, ambiguous to what they can evolve into. And what I really like is that they've been adding a lot of new Digimon to those. So, for example, with the uh, Hermit in the Jungle, you had Hydramon, which was really awesome. In Titan of Dust, you had Vultramon, which I loved. There's just a lot of really good new Digimon that have come out of the volume series, and I want to see that continue. I'd love to see a volume 4, 5, and 6. I'd love to see what they would uh, do with those. So we'll have to wait and see, because those did release again very quickly. The volume series was kind of like out real fast um, and just hasn't had any word on it until now so maybe we'll find out more about that in february when we're supposed to have the digimon con uh we'll see i'm sure they're going to mention something about the vital bracelet there and the other question of course is well we have the vital bracelet but what about a different virtual pet and i'm not sure about whether or not we will get another virtual pet this year other than the vital bracelet i kind of feel like they can keep milking this for a while i feel like uh, this can go on for another at least another year um they'd be okay to do so i'd like to see something wholly new but we'll see um what that would look like i don't know would they make it more technologically advanced like they did with the vital bracelet or would they stick with the nostalgia type devices hard to say um, i would love to see I, I do like the form factor of the classic type pets i like them a lot i like the raising style on these but i understand that also some people may be kind of sick <laughs> of these types of devices and may want something different, and that's totally fair. So I think there's a, I think there's a lot of good options that they could do to make something new, um, like they did with the Vital Bracelet, but maybe make it more of a traditional pet as well. I think there's a lot of good opportunity for that. And whether or not they do that, it's hard to say. I guess it depends on how successful the Vital Bracelet is, and whether they interpret that success as being we should make more Vital Bracelet or we should make more new pets like this. Um, it really could go either way. We also are on the 20th anniversary of the uh, Digimon Pendulum Progress this year. It came out in 2002 originally, so we are at that point where we could definitely see a Digimon Progress version 20th. Would we though? <laughs> I'm kind of doubtful, unfortunately. Uh, the original Digital Monster and the Pendulum were very much the backbones of the Digimon franchise, whereas the Progress was not so much. It was kind of released just as a partner device more so for the uh, D scanner along with in Digimon Frontier. So whether or not they would want to go back and do more of that is hard to say. It's also got a smaller roster than the Digital Monster and the um, Digimon Pendulum because it's only got three devices total. So there's not as many Digimon that you would pack into an anniversary version. And yeah, I, I think it would be really cool to see an updated version of that. But I'm not sure if there's going to be as much of a push for Bondi to do that. Uh, it, it's uh, certainly not one of the 
pets that everyone like clamors for, I guess I should say. Not that it's not a good pet, it is. It's just that people, when they think about Digimon V pets, they think about the Digital Monster and Digimon Pendulum before they think of the progress. So I don't know if Bandai would want to risk it and put out a 20th anniversary version of a device that most non-collectors would know about, or that a device that most non-collectors would not know about, because most people who are casually familiar with Digimon V-Pets won't know what a Digimon Pendulum Progress is. Or maybe they'll bank on the fact that people just like Digimon V-Pets in general and will buy another Digimon V-Pet regardless of what it's called. So, we'll see. I would like to see that myself. I think the Progress has a, some good room for improvement to where I would love to have a 20th version of it that would fix some of the things that I had a problem with. So, I would love to see that. So there we have the current state of Digimon V-Pets in 2021, and overall I must say that that state is good. We are continuing to get new Digimon V-Pets, which is always a plus, and we are going to be continuing to get more in the near future as well. At least, in the very least, the additions to the X series in English and additions to the Dim Card series for the Vital Bracelet. So there's a lot of good stuff to look forward to. Hopefully 2022 will have some good surprises for us Digimon V-Pet fans, and hopefully this has been a little bit of a help for those who are looking for clarification on all the different Digimon V-Pets that are out there. You can kind of consider this the uh, sequel to my What to Buy video a few years back, uh, which was in dire needs of a sequel. So hopefully this was at least a little bit helpful for you, because there is a lot of stuff out there it is hard to keep track of, but if you do need help keeping track, Make sure to join the Discord server, link is in the description as always, where you can ask plenty of questions and stay up to date with the latest news. We always ping the news channel anytime anything big happens, so you can always make sure that you are on top of everything happening in the world of Digimon V-Pets. But until next time...